So outside of uh, just conventional load monitoring, do you have any other tools just for, you know, you, we talked earlier about sometimes people are needing to understand like the tension of a rope or something else to really understand exactly what's going on. So what other tools do you have available for monitoring? Yeah, so uh, a very popular product that uh, has taken off for us in the last three years is the Colt. Now, this is a really neat looking device here. Um, this is meant to monitor the loads on static wire ropes up to one inch uh, under 11,000 pounds. So if you think about a guy wire for a cell tower, they're static, they're, they're holding up the tower. That line has to have a known tension on it mm -hmm. so that the tower is equally balanced, you know, plumb and tensioned vertically. Uh, so they can clamp this product onto the static line. And again, it's an app that's free, Bluetooth, and uh, downloaded free iOS and Android. And they can monitor the tension of those static lines. So uh, guy wire on cell towers, or in Texas, we have median barriers that are cables, wire rope cables, so that that'll stop a, a wreck from crossing over in the oncoming traffic. All those yeah. lines, lifeline access, zip lines, zip lines have to know the tensions on them so that uh, their customers don't go too fast or they don't go too slow and get hung in the middle, right? Mm, not be yeah. able to go anywhere. All of these lines have to have tensions. Now, the alternative is to uh, put a load cell in line and leave it there, right? Put it at the end line and, and just stays there, right? So that's not as effective as having a tool that you can walk up, clamp on, make sure the tension's correct, take it off, put it back in its carry case and move on. If you're working with a group of people that have never seen these types of systems before, how much training is typically required to get them really comfortable with how to rig it, how to monitor it, how to use it effectively? Every product that we sell in the carry case, uh, there's a QR code where they can get the manual, that it takes them to a landing page where they can see some videos uh, for it as well. And you guys produce plenty of those videos as well, helping customers understand how to effectively use tools. So we've really worked hard to make these tools user-friendly. And what I mean by that is open the case, turn the on button on the handheld on and go. So in the case of the Radiolink Plus, they turn the on button here on the, on the screen, it immediately pops up with a weight, a zero, or if they've got weight on it, it'll show how much weight is on it when they turn it on. The mathematics side of things is difficult, let's be mm -hmm. honest, right? When you're trying to sling angles and getting this uh, theory or this equation and make sure I had that right, so what advantage would it be to have a load cell that was complicated to operate? Absolutely. Right? So we've made it as, as easy and as user-friendly as possible. But what applications are a great fit for these types of load cells? Some tools are user specific, right? We've talked about the Colt recently, which um, that is meant for static line, right? That is kind of a singular use of that tool. Um, but the shackle, the wireless shackle, the radio link plus, those are used very widely in different applications, different um, industries, different capacities. Some use them for pulling. Uh, we've had some loggers come to us and they wanted to use the wireless shackle as they were pulling logs up the side of a mountain. Now in Texas, we don't, have, you know, we're just flat here in Houston. Uh, but uh, but it was interesting to hear how they went on about doing it, and they were super pleased with it, right? So the logging industry. Um, we have overhead cranes that use wireless shackles on their hooks because typically in a warehouse, overhead or headroom can be an issue when they're lifting something. Um, and there are thousands and thousands of overhead cranes in the United States with zero load monitoring, right? Sure. So the wireless shackle, that's a very common thing. They'll put a wireless shackle on the hook and they'll have like a bright LED screen slave display that shows the weights mounted on the wall like four inch tall letters real bright so you can see how much weight you're lifting that's a common application um, to even like we've discussed the radio link plus or the blue link being used on an auto crane just to make sure they don't over overload that uh davit that's really a davit crane an auto crane's a davit crane right mm -hmm. or a pedestal crane if you will so um those are the type of applications most common if you're picking something up and you don't know how much it weighs that's a perfect application for a load cell. I mean, let's be honest, there's there's tons of opportunities for people to rig stuff safer than they're doing it right now by knowing how much they're lifting. So on the flip side of that, what applications aren't a great fit for these load cells and dynamometers? Our load cells are meant to be used between 
14 degrees Fahrenheit and 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have some project load cells that we can go higher or lower than that um, by some degree, um, but every application is different, right? So if, if you have a customer who's taking a load cell into sub-zero temperatures, probably not a great environment, right? We don't, we don't want to falsely say, yeah, go down to any temperature you want and it breaks, that would be bad, right? So, um, and then uh, conversely in, let's say, uh, hot forge foundries, um, they'll put a load cell on a crane that, that possibly is picking up 150. Uh, we've had some guys tell us, well, it'll, it'll see a flash temperature of 250 degrees. I'm sorry, right? We, we just, we don't have an effective solution for something that hot. Mm. Now, again, we've made hotter capable load cells, but it by project, right? We're a solutions-based, straight point is a solutions-based company. We have engineers, we do project custom load cells uh, every day. And Crosby liked that about us, that we weren't just a box product. What's your application? Sorry, we don't have uh, this square, does not fit into your triangle kind of application, right? We're solutions-based. So we do those, um, but certainly we don't want anybody to take a common box product load cell try to use it in those extremes that they're not meant for. If somebody has an, an hazardous environment where they're using a spark resistant load cell, or excuse me, spark resistant uh, cranes and hoists and explosion proof or anything like that, uh, we have an ATEX rated load cell uh, that can be used in those hazardous environments, but it must be marked with ATEX and it has to be ATEX approved. So if a customer takes a standard Radiolink Plus and tries to use it in a spark resistant or hazardous environment, it is not approved for that. It must have that ATEX rating to be used in those environments. Right. Make sure that you're having those conversations with your lifting specialist, that you're reaching out to you know people like Aaron at Straight Point Crosby to, to understand exactly what you're getting yourself into because there's probably a tool out there to cover what you need, but it's not a one size fits all out of the box application. You've got to do your due diligence to understand what you're about to rig before you rig it. What are some common problems with these load cells with people using them or using them incorrectly or just not understanding how to rig them properly? Uh, yeah, so the most common problem, if you will, that we see is the uh, thought that load cells or weight is an exact science, right? It's the reason that when I go to the doctor, I weigh more on the doctor scale than I do at my house scale, right? Which it's, I think all of us can uh, agree that during this pandemic, we all weigh a little bit more than we used to, regardless of what we think. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to plead the fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, weight is not an exact science. The, the, um, only exact weights are under lock and key. They're platinum spheres so that they stay the weight. They don't rust and lose weight, right? Um, every load monitoring device load cell has a plus or minus tolerance. So a customer will call and they'll say, I just received your radio link plus. We turn it on, we picked it up. It does not match the integrated LMS system or load monitoring system in my crane. A couple questions I'm gonna ask right off the bat. Okay, when was the crane load monitoring system last calibrated? And what is the plus or minus tolerance of that crane scale? Typically they don't know, right? They're gonna say, oh, I'll find that information and I'll call you back. Well, they may find out very commonly that they don't know the plus or minus, they can't find when it was last calibrated. So at that point, there, our answer is, listen, you have a, a brand new Radiolink Plus with a certificate of calibration recently. We're gonna trust our, our recently calibrated known tolerance load cell. Um, so that is a thing. And, and customers also will have a concrete known weight, right? It's concrete blocks got 5,000 with a, a, the, the pound signal. So they know it weighs 5,000 pounds, but that thing has been beat up. Chunks of concrete have come off of it. It doesn't weigh 5,000 pounds anymore. The flip side of that is what load cell was used to weigh that 5,000 pounds and what was its plus or minus tolerance and when was it last calibrated, right? So, um, we're really after load monitoring monitor the loads. Our scales come calibrated, they're fresh. Uh, so thinking it's a, an exact a science or weight is an exact science. The other problem that we see sometimes is that customers are standing um, beneath the load cell. Now, I don't wanna say that they're, nobody should stand under a load, right? Nobody should, but there are some applications where um, a customer can be too close to the load where the signal is is jumping over them. And what I mean by that is on our Radiolink Plus, thousand meter range, 
this radio frequency band goes up and down and very close to the load there are really high peaks and really low valley so the customer is standing right here with the handheld and that radio frequency jumps over the handheld they may not be able to get signal that close right these are meant to be used far apart we want people to stand safely away from the load so a customer call me and say i can't get any signal off of this well where are you standing i'm about two foot from it typically they're in their office they've turned it on and uh, that's kind of a, a not a common problem right because they'll, they'll work at two foot but if the customer calls it, i'm having signal problem okay well tell me where you're at wh what's happening and uh they'll they'll give me an idea of where they're standing like, yeah okay so let's back up from the load cell one to keep you safe two that way you can get a signal outside of problems what are some common misconceptions to these things you know people who either think they do something that they don't or just don't even understand exactly what they do the biggest misconception on the straight point load cells is that they are both radio frequency and bluetooth and that's just not the case we offer products that are either radio frequency long distance thousand meter range or we offer a product that is bluetooth 100 meter range um, and and relatively uh strong bluetooth at 100 meters i mean 300 foot for bluetooth i wish my headphones did that <laughs> a long way um but um certainly not strong enough signal i think we've talked about this where it can cut through other wireless signals in the area so customer will call and say i've just bought a radio link plus i got the yellow handheld i can't connect my phone to it well that's because that's not a bluetooth device you have a radio frequency device the two easiest ways to find out if you have a bluetooth version of a load cell is to look for the dash ble that will tell you that that is a bluetooth load cell the other item to really quickly do is if you're using a yellow handheld like this you have a radio frequency load cell it's not bluetooth so the last question I wanted to ask you was, you know, especially for the people that are using this for the first time, or maybe they've had it for a while and maybe it's kind of beat up a little bit. What's the maintenance and repairability of these load cell systems? I mean, if it, if it breaks, is it game over? Does it depend on what the break is? You know, can these things be repaired at all? What are they looking at if they invest in this uh, system? Yeah, I'm glad you use that word invest because these load cells are an investment. They're an investment in safety. They're in a monetarily, they're a monetary investment, right? Because they're not, this is not a $10 load cell, right? Um, this is an investment into safety, into knowing how much you're lifting. So um, we've got load cells that we're calibrating that are 20, 25 years old. I mean, that is a long time. That is an investment. And um, as far as maintenance goes, we suggest an annual calibration on a load cell, right? Send it in annually to get calibrated and send back out. Now, with any rigging piece of hardware, it's going to depend on environment. You may use this load cell seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and, and you may want to get it calibrated once every quarter, just to make sure that your high frequency of use is still producing a accurate tolerance, right? That was staying in line with that plus or minus. But if you're using the tool once a week, you keep it in his care case, it's stored well, an annual calibration will be just fine. The other thing, that uh, as far as repairability of the load cell, um, the most common th thing that we see uh, for repairs as, is the product has been shock loaded or overloaded. And so what happens, we talked earlier about the strain gauges being bonded to the metal. With a shock load or an overload event, it's possible that one of those strain gauges can come unbonded from the metal. At that point, the load cell is going to jump all over the place. So it'll say 100, 1,000 minus 20 all of those things just jump randomly here and there for weight it's done you've got to send it in for repair evaluation and get it done now um, if you can imagine on a wire rope sling once you break a strand okay of that cable um, then you probably need to get it re evaluated mm -hmm. and see if it can still use the same thing with a load so once you pop a string gauge you need to send it in for evaluation and repair
I think that this whole conversation was a really great starting point for people that are considering, you know, getting away from just doing it all themselves and maybe moving into a better load monitoring system. Mm -hmm. But for people that are, you know, like I said, this is a great starting point. Where would you recommend that people go if they want to learn more about straight point, about Crosby, about load cells? You know, where, where should they go to learn a little bit more about these tools if they're thinking about making that investment into them? Yeah, great. Straightpoint.com. This is a really, really user friendly website. All of our products are clearly listed under products and services. You can click on an individual product. You can see the specifications. We have demo videos. We have spec tables. We have downloadable hand uh, user manuals. We have all kinds of useful information for those load cells on that website. And it's easily navigatable. Cool. And so it all starts with the conversation. You know, the, this conversation between Aaron and myself is a really, really great starting point to, to get you thinking about something maybe in a different way. But keep having those conversations. You have lifting specialists available to you. You have the entire team at Straight Point and Crosby more than willing to talk to you about these products. The important thing is that you and your team are having a good conversation about what your lifting plan should be and whether or not these things might be, you know, a great fit for you to, to help have you get a better understanding of what you're lifting and maybe make sure those are a little bit more safe and a little bit more efficient than before. So um, I do appreciate all of you that stuck with us to listen to this conversation. I thought it was an awesome conversation. Aaron, I really appreciate you taking the time out of all of your other training to, <laughs> to join me to talk about these load cells, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. So um, if you like this video, if you thought it was helpful, especially if you have a peer or a coworker that has been talking to you about these load cells, share this video with them, give them some resources so they can start understanding a little bit more about their own lift themselves. And as always, you know, if you, if you ever need anything, uh, reach out to our lifting specialists. They'd be happy to help you however they can. So for all of us, the Lifting and Rigging channel, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.